So we're heading into that business end of the season. I feel like I've said that multiple times over the past few weeks. We've just five or six games to go for these teams in the top six or eight. It's very, very important that they get their points on the board. We're going to be looking into a range of games today, starting off with Leighton Orient and Peterborough, but also going through the likes of Carlisle versus Lincoln, Oxford versus Fleetwood, Bolton versus Reading, Burton Albion versus Barnsley, and the big one, Pompey versus Derby County, the top of the table clash, which happens on Tuesday night. Very, very big game. But shall we get a look into the league table and then take it from there? If you're enjoying this type of League One previews, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below or in this top corner. We'll try and keep them going up until the end of the season and then we'll reassess over the summer. Hit that subscribe button down below and in this top corner. Derby County match reaction on Tuesday night after Portsmouth is heading your way. So as you can see on the screen right now, Portsmouth are leading the way. Five points clear of Derby County with a game in hand. Derby County on 81 in 41. Bolton Wanderers on 75 in 40. Peterborough and Barnsley both matching on 71 in 39. And Lincoln City have snuck themselves into that sixth place with their tremendous recent form with 64 points in 40 games i would not want to be the team who finishes in what third place and plays them but obviously they may even find themselves in fifth if barnsley or peterborough don't book their ideas up obviously we're going to start off this video by looking at peterborough versus Leighton Orient is going to be a very, very important game you look at Leighton Orient down with 58 points in 40 games they're not really in it anymore in my opinion but obviously you never know what's going to happen with Lincoln you never know what's going to happen with Oxford or Stevenage or Blackpool but they do have six points to make up and for me I think it might just be a bit much based on their form over the whole season and obviously only picking up four points out of their previous five games it's not quite the form of a promotion playoff team but let's get into that game starting off now so let's take a look at Leighton Orient versus Peterborough then. It is at Leighton Orient. It's a three o'clock kickoff on the 1st of April. If we just look at both teams head to heads and it does stretch back to 2014, but both teams sit with four wins each with three draws as well. The game back in September saw the sides draw 1-1. They played in the friendly the year before that, before Leighton Orient got promoted and Peterborough won convincingly in a 3-0 win. Let's take a look at both teams' recent form and let's see, is there going to be any shocks here? Now, if Leighton Orient are looking to make a late charge and challenge Lincoln City, they're going to have to start off here. And if you look at Peterborough's recent form, they've lost two of their last five games and that is back-to-back -back losses against Portsmouth and bottom of the league Carlisle United. They lost 3-1 at home to Carlisle United so that is going to be playing on their mind but Leighton Orient have only picked up four points in their previous five games. That was a win at Stevenage and a draw at home to Port Vale. They lost to Lincoln City this weekend in a result which I don't think they'll be happy with. I think they will have wanted more. It could have kept them very much in that run for the playoffs. I think they're just out of it now with it being six points and the position that they're in. Obviously, I think six points at this stage of the table is very different to six points where it comes to Bolton and Derby. But we'll have to see what comes down to play with Lincoln City and Peterborough. Let's get on to the next game. Next up, we're looking at Carlisle United and Lincoln City. Now, Carlisle United coming to the back of this game off an excellent win at Peterborough. And Lincoln City come in after getting themselves into those playoff places and they won't be wanting to fall out anytime soon. Now, if you look at the head-to-head -head of both sides, obviously it does stretch back to 2018. But earlier on this season, they drew 1-1 with each other at Lincoln City. And Lincoln City take the head-to-head 3-2 -head with two draws included. And obviously in the EFL Trophy in November of 2021, Carlisle got the better of Lincoln. But is that going to happen again? Heading into this game, let's take a look at both teams' recent form. I have said this a few times, but for me, Lincoln City are the team you do not want to face at the moment. They are looking odds-on favourites. For me, 
for that sixth place position, maybe even higher given their recent form. And it would not surprise me if they ended up going all the way and getting promoted to the championship via those playoff fixtures. As you can see on the right hand side, they've won five well, they've won four games in a row, drawing 0-0 with Stevenage, conceding one goal on the way. And it they are just in mega, mega form. They have a 24 goal difference, which is massive compared to those other teams around them. It's essentially an extra point. And then you look over and see the disparity on the left-hand side of Carlisle United's form, picking up just four points in five games. Now, a 2-2 draw with Stevenage is nothing to be frowned upon. Stevenage are a team up in those in that playoff battle, in my opinion, Steve Evans has done an excellent job there. But that win against Peterborough United, away from home as well, absolutely magnificent stuff from Paul Simpson and his and his group of players. They are obviously fighting against the odds for survival. And if we just go over to the right hand side where you can just see this little mini table, they are pretty much gone. Like, let's not lie about it. Yes, they've got six games to play, but They'd have to win essentially probably all six to get out. They're currently 13 points away from Burton. Are they going to be able to pick up another three points and get, keep their hope alive just for one more week? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Oxford United face Fleetwood Town at the Cassam Stadium. And if you look at the head-to-head, -head, it does not look good for Oxford, does it? And if you look at Oxford's recent form, it is not brilliant. But... Let's look into the head-to-head -head first off. Now, obviously, these two sides have played each other a lot. And it's five wins from Oxford, ten wins from Fleetwood with three draws. However, if you go back to the 16th of September, this this previous season, it was a 3-0 thrashing for Oxford United. But are they going to be able to bring back the form that they started this season with and take all three points at Fleetwood? I think it's going to be very difficult for them. They have just fell out of the playoffs. It might give them a proper kick in the backside to get their performances together. Obviously, the new manager isn't quite hasn't quite carried on the form that uh, their previous manager did, and it's just one of those things where I think they'll be one of the best teams in the league next season. But yeah, looking at the recent form, it is not great is it? Now Fleetwood are another one of those sides, if you look on the right hand side, battling those relegation places, they have 34 points in 40 games. Now they are a bit closer than everyone else, well I say everyone else, than Carlisle, but I think it's a tough task. Those teams at the bottom especially, they need to pick up six points Fleetwood to get above Burton, but then you've got Cheltenham who have two games in hand and are only two points away from Burton, and you've got Port Vale with a game in hand only a point away from Burton. I think it's looking a bit dangerous for the likes of Shrewsbury and Cambridge and Burton, which is not something which I thought I'd be saying at the start of the season. But as you can see, they have picked up, what, six points in their previous five games, which isn't great. But losing that big game against Cheltenham is not what they wanted. Obviously, it's difficult for Fleetwood, but it's also difficult for Oxford. At the other end of the table, they've only picked up seven points out of their previous five games. Losing 5-0 to Bolton Wanderers in that run. And also losing 2-1 to Portsmouth. Now, at one point, it was Portsmouth and Oxford who looked like running away with this league. But Oxford... Their manager moved on to pastures new and they just couldn't quite find their feet again and they've really struggled since changing manager and that is why they find themselves outside of the playoffs on goal difference. Bolton Wanderers face Reading at the Tough Sheet Community Stadium. Now, Reading are a bogey side for some of these top sides and you can see here with the results and you even go back to September where Reading got the better of Bolton Wanderers at their home ground. It's four wins to one for Reading with six draws in the process. Now, Reading have had, in my opinion, a brilliant season given the situation that they're going through off field. Obviously, as a Derby fan, we know how difficult that can be. But the important thing for Derby County fans and Reading fans is that Reading pick up another three points. Bolton Wanderers seem to have struck a bit of a rough patch as we head into the back end of the season and as you can see right there winning one game in their previous five is what has left them 
falling out of the automatic promotion places after at one point being six points clear of Derby County. And I think it even was higher than that at one point. But if you look at Reading's recent form, they've won three of their previous five games, losing 2-1 to Derby County and 2-1 to Wickham Wanderers. But they've scored an abundance of goals in that period. And they scored three at Carlisle United. They scored at Wickham. They scored at Red. They scored at Derby. Sorry, and they scored five in their previous two games. Bottom Wanderers will be going into this, wondering if they're going to be able to get anything out of this game because Reading are in some really, really good form heading into the back end of this season. This is a big one at both ends of the table, really. Barnsley have faltered recently and have saw their automatic promotion charge come to a bit of a halt. And Burton Albion, who at one point thought they were pretty much safe, now find themselves just a couple of points outside of the relegation zone. And those teams behind do have games in hand. Now, for me, I'm always a big fan. I'd rather have points on the board than games in hand. But are those teams at the bottom going to think like that? Absolutely not. And if we look at the head-to-head, -head, it isn't looking very exciting for Burton Albion. Five wins from Barnsley, three wins from Burton. But Burton haven't beaten them since April last season. Now, obviously, they've only played one game since then. But if you look at the form, it seems to flip on its head. Maybe Burton will pick something up in this game. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's take a look at both teams' recent form. Now, here is the problem for both sides. Burton Albion have lost four of their previous five games and Barnsley have lost two of their five. Their only victory coming against bottom of the table, Carlisle United. And it all comes after being 2-0 up after about half an hour against Bolton Wanderers and falling to a 2-2 draw late on in the game. I believe it was to a penalty. And they've recently dropped another four points. Four points? No. Not four points, five points. Dropped another five points in their past two games after losing 2-0 at home to Cambridge and drawing 0-0 with Cheltenham Town. And the biggest of them all this week, in my opinion, you can't really keep those eyes off this game because Derby head to Fratton Park to face Portsmouth. I've got a full match review coming out later on today, so make sure you hit that subscribe button down below to stay tuned for all my latest content. But obviously, this is a massive one. Derby do seem to have the upper hand when it comes to head-to-head, -to -head, but that means nothing. Derby haven't beat Portsmouth since the 21st of April 2012, according to Footmob. And they obviously haven't played each other a great deal, but they haven't beaten them since returning to League One. Every single game has been a draw. I did a predictions video yesterday, and for me, I have predicted a 1-1 draw. I do think this game, it, it, it's going to have an edge to it for me because Derby know that Bolton can close that gap in their game. And obviously, Portsmouth know that they could pretty much seal their promotion if they get all, if they get all three points. Now, if we look down at both sides' recent form, now, both sides are in excellent excellent form four wins out of five for Derby four wins out of five for Pompey a draw against Blackpool the only bad note on that for Pompey and a 1-0 loss for Derby at Northampton now it is going to be very very difficult to call this game in my opinion and it's going to be very interesting to see how both teams line up obviously we've seen Paul Warren with his very unattractive but effective style of football get Derby to second in the league where do you think Derby are going to end up finishing this season? I think it's going to be a very, very difficult period for the Rams. These final five games, it's nervy for me as a Derby County fan. I'm sure that's the same for those other fans in and around the playoffs. So here we have all the League One previews for the upcoming round of fixtures. We're obviously focusing mainly on that promotion race. It's massively important for those teams up there to make sure they get their jobs done. And obviously, I think Derby County have pretty much sealed their playoff place. And now they're looking to seal automatic promotion back to the championship. And a win at Pompey goes a long way to getting that done. Is that going to happen? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And I'll catch you in the next video. Make sure to go and find me on TikTok, pictured here, and Twitter, pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula One and football weekend.